They say that Koreans today are among the most genetically uniform people on earth. A nation of shared roots, shared faces, shared blood. But what if I told you that beneath this modern surface lies a lost chapter of ancestry, one that science has only just begun to uncover? It started with a question. What really happened on the Korean Peninsula in the deep past? When scientists extracted DNA from 1,700-year-old skeletons buried beneath the royal tombs of Gaia, they expected the usual story. Lineage in line with today's Koreans. Continuity, not surprise. But what they found didn't fit. Threaded through the ancient genomes was something unexpected, something that shouldn't have been there. A genetic signature known from across the sea. The DNA of the Jaman people. The Jaman, prehistoric hunter-gatherers once thought isolated to the Japanese islands. Yet here, they were woven into the blood of ancient Koreans. It wasn't an isolated trace. In some graves, the Jaman-related ancestry was strong, shocking, suggesting ancient migrations, forgotten crossings, lost kinships. And so, a deeper question emerged. Who were the true ancestors of modern Koreans? And more haunting still, what parts of that heritage have we lost? Because today, Modern Koreans show almost none of this Jaman ancestry. Centuries of mixing, unification, and cultural homogenization have erased it from the genome. A vibrant, diverse Korea vanished beneath the weight of time and history. If you're fascinated by lost histories and ancient DNA mysteries, subscribe now. For more untold stories, still waiting to be uncovered. And as for that ancient tomb in Gimhi, one grave held the biggest secret of all. Beneath the earth of Gimhi, a tomb was waiting to be heard. The Daesung Dong burial site, royal graves of Gaia kings. A place of ceremony, power, and sacrifice. Archaeologists had known of it for decades. Elaborate gold crowns, weapons, jewelry, symbols of an ancient elite. But recently, something deeper was exhumed. Not artifacts, bloodlines. When scientists sequenced the genomes of the skeletons within, they expected to confirm a proud Korean lineage, a royal house aligned with modern ancestry. But two of those ancient souls, they spoke a different story. Their DNA wasn't closest to any modern Korean population. No. Instead, these individuals were genetically closer to the Jaman, the prehistoric people of Japan. How? Why? The discovery sent ripples through the scientific world. It shattered the illusion of a sealed peninsula. Because 1,500 years ago, Korea and Japan were not isolated rivals. They were deeply connected. Across the narrow Korea Strait, ships sailed laden with iron, silk, grain. And with each crossing, people moved. Families, artisans, perhaps captives, perhaps lovers. Bloodlines intertwined, woven through marriage, trade, and migration. And now, beneath the soil of a king's tomb, the genetic echo of that ancient exchange had been found. But here lies the greatest enigma. Today, those Jaman bloodlines have vanished from Korean DNA. Gone. What happened? What force, social, political, cultural, erased this chapter of ancestry? That is a mystery we are only beginning to untangle. Because one truth is certain. This ancient Japanese ancestry did not simply fade. It disappeared for a reason and to find out why we must journey even deeper into the genetic past. The data didn't lie. Across the glowing heat maps, ancient Korean genomes lit up in rich, overlapping hues. North Asian, island Japanese, deep coastal strands. A genetic mosaic. A peninsula once alive with movement, connection diversity. But then, another map appeared. The modern Korean genome. Clean, tight, uniform and one color was gone. The Jaman signal, once clearly visible in ancient graves, had vanished. Not faded. Erased. Modern Koreans carry almost zero trace of this ancestry now. How does an entire bloodline disappear from a nation? The answer lies in time. And in the tides of history. In the centuries after the Three Kingdoms, Korea changed. Kingdoms rose and fell. Wars tore through the land. Scylla's unification brought not just political consolidation, but a genetic one. Populations mixed, borders closed. Isolation replaced openness. Uniformity replaced variety. And slowly, what had once been a genetic crossroads 
became one of the world's most homogeneous nations. But beneath the modern surface, that lost diversity still whispers. The bones in Gaia's tombs, the ancient DNA, they tell us that Korea was once far more connected, far more complex, than we've been taught. And that raises a deeper question. If this Jamin ancestry was just one layer of the Korean genetic story, what else lies buried even deeper? For generations, one story echoed through classrooms and textbooks alike, that the ancestors of Koreans had come sweeping down from the great Mongolian steppes, nomads on horseback, forging a new identity in the peninsula below. But the genes tell a different tale. A stranger, older one, thousands of miles to the northeast, in the cold forests near the Amur River, lies Devil's Gate Cave, a dark hollow in the stone, a place untouched for millennia. Inside, buried in ancient soil, lay human remains, 9,000 years old. When the DNA was sequenced, something astonishing appeared. The closest living relatives of these ancient Siberians were not Mongolians, not Chinese, but modern Koreans. The Ulchi people, descendants of those ancient forest dwellers, still live near the Russian Far East today. And through their genes, through their faces, echoes of those earliest East Asians survive. The same markers are found in Koreans now. The curve of an eye, the tilt of a cheekbone, the shape of a jaw, traces of an Arctic past hidden beneath the modern Korean face, a migration long forgotten by myth, yet written indelibly in the genome. The peninsula we know today was shaped not by a single northern invasion, but by ancient rivers of ancestry, flowing from deep in the Siberian forests. And this, this was only one current among many, because the forces that shaped Korea's bloodlines came from far more directions than anyone imagined. And that wasn't the only migration reshaping Korea. For centuries, the image of Korea's origins pointed north. Northern steppes. Northern warriors. Northern blood. But the genome whispers a different truth. When scientists mapped the deep ancestry of modern Koreans, a single number shocked them. Over 70% of the Korean genetic profile traces not to the north, but to the south. Vietnam. Taiwan. Ancient Southeast Asia. How? The answer begins with a seed. Small. Simple. Transformative. Rice. 8,000 years ago, the knowledge of rice cultivation spread northward, along rivers, over mountains, across the sea. But it wasn't just the crop that traveled. Men followed, carrying not only grain, but genes. The pattern is written in the Y chromosome maps. A surge of southern paternal lineages flowing into the peninsula. Generation by generation, a migration wave driven not by conquest, but by the promise of life, fields to farm, families to build, a future to plant. And so, beneath the modern Korean face, lies a deep southern legacy, one that defies the old stories, one that still shapes the nation today. But this southern current was not the last, because even as farmers crossed rivers and forged new homes, Yet another ancestral current crossed the sea. The sea between Korea and Japan, narrow, restless, unforgiving. For centuries, it was imagined as a barrier, a dividing line between two worlds, two peoples, two destinies. But the DNA tells a different story, long before borders, before kingdoms, before written words. That narrow sea was a bridge. Across its waves came boats, and with them families. Farmers, artisans, bloodlines. In Japan's Yayoi period, 2,000 years ago, a new way of life took root. Rice farming, metal tools, ceramic styles that bore the fingerprints of Korea. And when scientists sequenced the genomes of Yayoi era, remains, they found something stunning. Their closest genetic relatives today are not in Japan, but in Korea. The migration wasn't a trickle. It was a tide. Korean ancestors reshaped not only Japan's culture, but its gene pool, an ancient kinship buried beneath centuries of rivalry, politics, and war. Two nations, so often seen as separate, are in fact bound by shared blood, and in that shared ancestry lies a deeper truth. That identity is never as simple as the stories we tell, but the migrations between these lands did not stop there, because within ancient Korea itself, one subgroup carried an even stranger signature, 
In the shadowed tombs of ancient Gaia, another secret stirred. At first glance, the burials told a familiar story. Royal graves of the elite flanked by offerings, and those who had been sacrificed. But when scientists peered into the genomes, the deeper fracture appeared. Not one tribe, not one people. Two. Two distinct genetic groups, coexisting in the same kingdom. They called them TK1 and TK2. One line, rooted in Northeast Asia. The other, carrying a heavier pulse of island ancestry, tied to the Jaman. But here's the enigma. This division wasn't marked in life. No difference of class. No boundary of sex. No visible sign in how these people lived, or how they were buried. Across both groups, the same rituals unfolded. The same wooden coffins. The same grave goods. The same solemn rites. A land where difference was woven quietly beneath the skin. An ancient Korea, not a monolith, but a tapestry of blended ancestries, living side by side. A complexity long forgotten beneath the smooth narratives of nationhood. And then came the great tide that would wash it all away. Because soon a force far larger than any tribe was about to reshape the peninsula. Then the great unification erased it all. The kingdoms of old were falling. Gogurio. Beach. Gaia. One by one swept away in war and fire. And rising from the ashes was Scylla. A new power. A single banner. A unified Korea. But unification comes with a price. Across the peninsula, people were uprooted. Villages emptied. Families scattered. Refugees fled from one kingdom to another. Soldiers marched across ancient borders. Merchants, artisans, farmers forced into new lands, new lives. It wasn't just political boundaries that dissolved. It was bloodlines. Genetic diversity that had once flourished, fractured, folded in on itself. The distinct tribes, the ancient subgroups, began to blend. Over generations, through marriage and migration, a new gene pool emerged. One more uniform, more cohesive, and the vibrant heterogeneity of ancient Korea began to fade. Today, modern Korean DNA reflects this collapse. A striking homogeneity, where once there had been a rich mosaic. And in this contrast, an unsettling question lingers. What identities, what voices, what ancestral threads were lost in this great blending? What stories no longer told, because their lineages have vanished from memory and from the genome? And yet, in one place, far from the mainland's wars and unification, one island kept evolving in secret. Off Korea's southern coast lies an island shaped by wind, stone, and survival. Jeju, a place of towering cliffs, black volcanic rock, and a sea both beautiful and unforgiving. For centuries, one group has defied those waters, the Hainyo, women of the sea, mothers, daughters, divers. Without oxygen tanks, they plunge beneath icy waves, breath held harvesting from the deep, and somehow their bodies endure what few others can. It began as a mystery. Why could these women die for hours, day after day, into cold that should have crippled them? When scientists examined their DNA, they found an answer. Unique mutations, adaptations sculpted by generations of life beneath the sea. Genes for lower blood pressure, protecting their hearts as they plunged. Genes for superior cold tolerance, keeping their bodies stable in the frigid depths. These weren't traits from distant ancestors. They had evolved here, a living example of how human culture can drive human evolution. Through centuries of diving, the Hainyo had reshaped their own biology. And today, their genes offer more than just endurance. They hint at treatments, medical insights, that could help people far beyond Jeju shores. But beyond science lies something deeper a testament to the power of human will, that the choices we make, how we live, what we do, can echo not just in culture, but in our very blood. And yet even here, on this windswept island, the story of Korean genes does not end. Because beneath these modern adaptations, beneath even the Hanyo's remarkable mutations, Korea's genetic story reaches even further back, before kingdoms, before rice, before even the idea of Korea. There were footsteps, soft, cautious, ancient, across windswept plains beneath dense forest canopies. The first humans moved through East Asia, 
40,000 years ago, in a cave near Beijing, one of them remained. Tianyuan Man. When his bones were finally unearthed and sequenced, scientists glimpsed a ghost, an ancestor from the dawn of East Asian humanity. And within his genome, they found the spark, the root of lineages that would one day spread across all of East Asia and deep into the Korean Peninsula. But Tianyuan was not alone. Far to the northeast, in Devil's Gate Cave, another fragment of this ancient story was waiting. Eight thousand years ago, hunter-gatherers lived and died in those shadow chambers. And when their DNA was read, a familiar thread emerged, that same deep ancestry flowing down through the ages and into the blood of modern Koreans. Mapped across time, you can see it, from Paleolithic hunters to Neolithic foragers to Bronze Age migrants to Iron Age farmers, a river of ancestry, bending, merging, reshaping, yet never stopping. And today, in the eyes, the skin, the bones of modern Koreans, echoes of these first East Asians still live, a living tapestry woven from tens of thousands of years. But even this great arc is not the final chapter, because hidden within Korea's genetic legacy, there's still one more puzzle to decode. We often think of identity as simple, a flag, a name, a bloodline. But the deeper we look into the bones, the genes, the hidden past, the more that simplicity unravels. Ancient Korea was a land of layers, northern blood, southern waves, island crossings, Siberian shadows, a genetic complexity now masked by modern uniformity. How much of that past do we even remember? How much was shaped by stories we chose to tell? And how much by the stories we chose to forget? Because the genome holds truths that no dynasty, no myth can fully erase. It whispers of migrations unseen, of ancestors unspoken, of a shared, tangled heritage far richer than any single narrative. So then, what does it really mean to be Korean, or to be anyone, when beneath every national story runs an ancient, borderless river of blood, a river that binds us, divides us, and reminds us, we are all more connected than we know. And this is only the beginning, because as we turn our gaze to the Russian Far East, to the lost isles of the Ryukyus, to the forgotten lineages still hidden in the bones of Asia. Even more secrets are waiting to be unearthed.